This presentation is about Fourier series and eigenfunctions. By now you should be used to the idea that the input of a system is going to be for x of t, and our output is going to be our y of t. For Fourier series, we're building things up out of complex exponentials. We do that because they show up quite frequently and work really nice with our systems. If our input is e to the j omega t, in a linear constant coefficient differential equation systems, which is what most of our LTI systems are, our output will be h of j omega e to the j omega t. Notice how they have a certain term in common that e to the j omega t is itself. It's self in and self out scaled by a constant h j omega. h j omega is just a constant. Quite often it's a complex constant, but it's just a constant. Our e to the j omega t is our eigenfunctions, because we get the word eigen from the German. We can use these eigenfunctions to determine our h j omega. Recall that our x of t is e to the j omega t. Our y of t is h of j omega e to the j omega t. Therefore, y prime will be h j omega is just a constant. Again, possibly a complex constant. We take our derivative of e to the j omega t, which gives us j omega, comes out in front, e multiplied by e to the j omega t. For our second derivative, we repeat the process. h of j omega is a constant, j omega is a constant. And now, for our j omega t, there's another j omega in e to the j omega t. We usually write this, h of j omega, j omega squared, e to the j omega t. Make sure you're careful not to get this j omega, which is an argument of h, mixed up with the j omega squared, next to which it is multiplied. We also keep the j omega squared together as one term. We could say that j omega squared is equal to j squared omega squared, and this is negative one omega squared. We tend not to do this. We keep the j and the omega together. We can now put these back into our differential equation. We have a 3 multiplying our y prime. We have a 2 multiplying our y. We can now plug these things in. We can solve for h of j omega by factoring it out. We're going to factor the e to the j omega out too, but put it at the end. We can drop the e to the j omega t on both sides because they're never equal to zero. And then we wind up with h j omega equals 5 divided by j omega squared plus 3 j omega plus 2. This is the answer that we're looking for.